basically the background of hiring and retaining is something that I'm uniquely qualified for because I've hired on every different level of the industry and continue to do so. So for me, the most important part of what we do is the people we have. And I think the greatest of companies with the greatest of brands uh, can fail if they don't have a good team behind them. So let's dive right in. So we're gonna start with recruiting and then move our way into uh, retaining, which is obviously equally if not more important. All right, so the recruiting points. Start with your distributors. Obviously some of you are distributors, uh, but this is the best place if you're an importer, is your current distributor, uh, you're the key state you're starting in, uh, use them and, and, and ask them if they know the best people, they are always gonna be the best area to go to first. Yeah, front line for hiring, um, there is our distributor partners. They see the marketplace different than we do. They're the most active, uh, they know who the most active and talented are. And I've found some great people just by asking my distributors. Uh, I think that that is a, the, the perfect place to start and sometimes we don't even have to go any further. Sometimes that's where we find everything. Um, they have a vested interest in helping us hire. You know, they wanna see themselves be successful. So with the right people, we will be successful. Um, and then it also quietly has a secondary uh, aspect to it. It shows our trust and faith in our distributors. Um, and when they see that we're coming to them, um, it makes us feel more like partners. And it, it makes them understand that we are somebody that is uh, excited to be working with them. And we know that they're going to help us uh, in the long run. All right, ask your supplier peers. I mean, that starts at, at events like this where uh, you're around other people, uh, you're shaking hands, you're meeting new people. Um, for me, the supplier peers, um, although they could be com competition at times, they also need to become part of our network. Um, a successful hiring manager is well connected in the local supplier network and hears of talent well before uh, it's needed, be well before they need to hire. I think that's a really important piece um, I think myself in my main markets, I've always tried to do that and be fully aware of the talent that's in. And, and I've gone after people that may be not even available because I've heard so, much, so many good things about them through my supplier network. Uh, most of your suppliers, uh, peers are actively trying to gain a reputation and helping uh, place peers in positions is a great way to solidify yourself as a go-to person. Um, so that's one thing, again, they have a vested interest with us. Um, other suppliers are more than likely to give you the truth. Uh, that's another side of it. When you're asking you know, a, a reference list, you're gonna hear great things about everybody for the most part. Very rarely are you gonna hear something bad, and if you do, it's probably illegal. Um, but your supplier peers will be able to give you the down low on what's happening with, with each candidate and any issues they've seen. Post, post, and post some more. I think this is pretty you know, relevant to today's marketplace. Um, when it comes down to it, uh, it's a digital world. Uh, you've got to put your ads out there everywhere, um, get them on all the best sites. Uh, wine jobs I list here, I'm not, I don't work for wine jobs, but for me, I've found some great talent through that website. Um, while you'll get 30, 40, 50 resumes, uh, you might only have eight that have actual value for what you're looking for, but you'll still find somebody for who they are. I as well keep a close eye on those websites and I hope everybody else does, it's important to do that to know the things that are available in the market, to know the things, uh, the, the people that are available, the companies that are hiring. Um, I know for myself to see companies that are continually hiring the same positions over and over again uh, is definitely something that we should all keep an eye on and be aware that there might be an issue within that company. Um, all, and also in turn, the companies that are growing exponentially and you see them adding more and more people to different places, that's also something that's really important for us all to, to keep an eye on. Um, and the other reputable sites, of course, and I have found some good people here, Glassdoor, BevForce, I mean, there's a slew of them. I think those three are a good place to start, um, but you want a large applicant pool. I guess that's the most important part of recruiting is you want a large applicant pool that you're working with. Trust your instincts. I think that this is pretty self-explanatory, but once you have scheduled interviews, you've gotten your applicant pool, you've slimmed it down, uh, look past the resume and focus on getting to the important stuff. Uh, who the applicant really is and what their goals are. Because uh, more often than not, you have people that seem like great applicants, but their goal is to be much bigger than the position you're hiring. And, and although that's a good thing to have ambition, you also want to make sure somebody's ready to take the time and grow within that position before they make that next step. That's a really important part of it. 
Uh, avoid cliche inter interview questions. I think that you know we get caught up in this sometimes. You know, a sell me this pen type of mentality. Um, for, for, it is important to ask tough questions so that we can ask people, so that people can answer us, uh, you know, on the fly, and we can see how they react to those tough questions. Uh, but it's not important to ask these cliche questions that are that are you know on a, on a cookie cutter interview that that a corporate company would put together. And then I really do subscribe to the mantra in every part of my life to go with your gut. Um, if you're between candidates, uh, the, the person that is easier to speak to, that's more personable, um, is the person you should go with. Um, ultimately, we are in sales, and likability is the most important part. You know, the way you get along with somebody and you interact with somebody is the same way that person's going to get along and interact with their distributors and their customers. Uh, it's really, for me, that, that is the most important aspect of hiring a person. You can train skills. Um, you can train uh, wine knowledge, uh, sales acumen, business acumen, but you really can't train personality. It's, it is who somebody is. So for me, that's the gut question is who, which one of my candidates is the one that I would like to sit down and have a conversation with and I can get along with. Be cognizant and empathetic. I've personally gone through this many times and I think it's important we all keep it in mind. Uh, you know, we're, we're hiring people that have families, that have lives, that have other, other jobs at that time or don't and are looking for a job. Um, it's really important for us to, to realize um, that we're not gonna put somebody in a position where they are not prepared to succeed. Somebody who doesn't have the right background and hasn't spent the right amount of time in that position um, is probably not gonna be happy. Uh, they'll become overwhelmed and now those people become jaded very quickly. So uh, while you might find the right personality, and this sounds like a little bit of going backwards, you'll find that right personality but also make sure they have the roots and the background to be able to do the job you need them to do. Um, unless you're willing to invest hours and hours, uh, weeks and weeks on, on training somebody, which a lot of people don't have that time or that ability, which will be later in this uh, presentation. Uh, do not draw out the interview process for weeks. I have I've also been in, involved in things like this where I'm interviewing with a company and I'm excited and, and, and things look like they're going well um, and then it's two weeks I don't hear anything and then I get a call three weeks later to meet them the next day um, and these processes sometimes just get lit, drawn out and drawn out. You know, two, three months uh, to hire somebody is, is an extended period of time. So from my experience, I think the best way to deal with it because you'll lose candidates this way um, is have three levels of interview at the most. I think that if you're hiring, let's say, uh, in, in, if on my side, the supplier side, if you're hiring an, an entry level uh, area manager, have them interview with the regional manager, have them interview with the divisional manager if you have that level, and then have them interview with the, the, the senior management um, slash ownership, and that's the end of it. I think that there should not be more than that. I think we have to make decisions, um, and you, like I said, you will not only lose candidates, you will lose credibility if people realize that they're gonna have to sit around for two or three months uh, uh, waiting for themselves to be hired. Um, so that's an important fact in my, in my world. And then lastly, uh, keep in mind what you want out of the position and what the candidate's long-term goals are. That's also something that I stated at the beginning. You wanna make sure you hire somebody that's hungry to succeed and not just looking for a stepping stone. And in our industry, uh, we see a lot of that. You see a lot of people that are slowly, uh, that are trying to quickly move up the ladder um, and, and that's not always the right way to go. We need people that have built a nice little base and a nice root system before that tree starts to grow. Um, so keep that in mind and it's important questions during the interview process is, is whether or not that person is in it for that three to five year period. You know, defining what that period is is important because I think, you know, sometimes we say I'm hiring a, a regional manager, uh, but I want to give them, you know, I want them to give me, um, you know, the next 10 years of their life. Might not be realistic. So you really should think to yourself, what, where are you gonna get paid out on this? Uh, if you have five years out of somebody, is that gonna give you what you need? Are you prepared to move on and hire somebody new and maybe, maybe to promote this person in that five year period? Um, that should be a clear thing that's in your mind when you start the interview process, is how much you expect to get out of this job. Oops. So there's recruiting, it sounds easy. Um, I think it starts, like I said, it starts by your penetration in the market, um, your knowledge of the market, and your knowledge with your local distributors, your local accounts. Um, I, I always hesitate, I, you'll notice one point I didn't put on there was to ask your accounts. 
because I have personally seen that backfire. If you ask, if you're in Chicago and you ask Binnie's what, what, what they think, you know, they think a good candidate is and they give you somebody and you don't hire that person, you're, you're in a bad position with Binnie's. So um, I, I do think it's important to start with the distributor, then go to your supplier peers, then go to the websites. I would personally try to stay away from uh, the account level people uh, to start unless you have very close relationships where you can ask a, a, an open question and not be concerned they're going to hold it against you in the future. Um, I think that the, inter the recruiting process for us in today's world is a process that is, uh, that, that is fast. And, and just like when you sell a house, you know, you're going to get offers and, and people are going to accept and move on relatively quickly. So moving quickly through that process, you know, knowing ahead of time what your budgets are, getting that person on board quickly is the, is the, the only way you're really going to get the best, best talent. So now you've hired that, that person, whoever they may be, and now we walk into the retaining side, which is equally, uh, if not more important. So pay competitively. This is a tough one. I think everybody, we have small companies here, we have medium-sized companies here. Uh, if you're not willing to pay the, the current wages in the marketplace, you've got to be aware that you're going to be getting very entry-level people. And you're going to have to invest more in their training. So it's going to end up costing you in the long run, and it's going to take a lot of trial and error before they are available um, to really succeed in their, in their position. So I think, listen, medium, small companies, we don't have to pay the top. We don't have to pay the same uh, you know, wages that companies like you know, Constellation are paying, for example, not to put anybody out there. But uh, we do have to pay competitively. Uh, people are making a living. This is a career. They have families in some cases. So it's important that we do take that seriously. Um, your best talent, the people you find through this recruiting process, they're going to know what their worth is. I mean, I, I put a number on myself every day, you know, whether or not anybody agrees with me, that's a different story. But, uh, but we should always, they know what their worth is and they're being approached by other companies and there's being numbers thrown at them. So when we hire, we have to be aware that that person might love you, might love the company, but if you're 30% less than the, person, the other person, it's a tough no to say. If you lose someone, uh, it's more than likely you'll have to pay that increased amount. And again, I've personally seen this where I've had great candidates uh, that are great employees that were some of my best employees and I've asked um, to, to take care of them and to give them a better wage and not at my current job. I don't want everybody to know that at previous positions. Uh, but I wanted uh, you know, to, to take care of them and make sure we kept them. And, and I, I, that did not happen through senior management slash ownership and uh, those people ended up leaving. And when they left, they got a 30% increase in salary, and then we had to end up paying somebody 30% more because that was what the wage was at that time. Um, and, and, and back to the recruiting side, that person who left, the, to speak of them, I then hired them at this company. So you, you go after your best people and stay with them. Uh, employee morale, morale is largely dependent on perceived value. Um, so if, if somebody feels like you think they're val valuable, um, they're going to stay. You know, they're going to go through things with you. They're going to work for you. So I think that uh, when, they, when somebody thinks that the current marketplace uh, salary is X and you're paying them X, um, they feel like they're not being truly appreciated. And again, it's a small price to pay for the long-term situation that you're in where you want to keep somebody and see them grow within your company. So again, competitively, not the highest, but not the lowest. Offer a good benefit package. This is also a tough one for smaller businesses, and that's very well aware. Um, I will say that personally myself, I have turned positions down that were large positions with great salaries because the benefit package was bad. Um, if you're hiring somebody that has a family especially, it's really important that they, uh, that they take care of that family in their mind, or a spouse or a partner, um, and that benefit package is a big piece of it. You can actually get away with paying a little less salary if you have a great benefit package, and I've seen that work and I've seen that uh, firsthand. Um, the, the cost may be more, like I said, but uh, you can cover a lot of faults uh, with, with that. And then also, it's a selling point. When you're hiring people, you talk about your benefit package. When your people are out there talking to other people, they talk about the great benefits they have with this company. So I think that's a piece of it that sometimes we forget. Benefits mean something. You know, unfortunately, we live in the United States of America where our, our healthcare system is what it is, and it's very expensive. So uh, it's something to be aware of. Um, the last thing you want is employees losing productivity due to stress from medical expenses. And again, it happens. You know, one big thing can wipe somebody out, and you don't want that to happen. 
Um, your employees are your family. Take care of them as, uh, like your family uh, and as you would take care of your family. Once we've hired that person, achievable bonus and appropriate budgets. Again, achievable, not easy, not must make, not 100% makeable, not, not max bonus every year, but achievable. People have to see something coming back from their hard work. Uh, and if they're not hitting that bonus, then that's where we start talking to our employees about what we can do to help them get there. But that bonus should be built into how you're hiring. You should realize that you know, this is my max exposure and I'm probably gonna be, you know, let's say that bonus is at 35% you know, that year, you know, 17%, 15, 10%, you should be aware you're gonna be paying that out um, and, and you should budget it into your, to your uh, systems. Um, when teams achieve their goal and are rewarded for it, uh, they will achieve them over and over and over again. And they just honestly will. It's, uh, uh, the, you hold that carrot in front of somebody and you have to give them a taste of that carrot. They can't keep chasing it or they're gonna find a way to get the carrot without running. Give your teams the tools they need to succeed and this includes budget. An all-star employee with small budgets is not gonna reach their potential. Um, and this is true, you know, I'm speaking a lot of this is coming obviously from the supplier side, but this is remain true for the distributor side. Um, if you have your great and best employees that are out there and they're uh, in the on trade um, and, and, and you at your company give expense budgets and they don't have an expense budget, they can't go out in the marketplace and spend money. They can't support the business they're getting and it gets harder and harder for them to see success because their competitors are doing so. And if you're talking about a regional manager position within a supplier, um, what, what happens there is again, if, if, if somebody doesn't have the budget to go out and, and, and visit their distributors and visit their markets, um, they will not have success in that region. Because um, although we live in a digital world where people are uh, you know, sitting in front of computers and doing teleconferencing and web conferencing, um, there's nothing that takes the place of shaking somebody's hand. And your distributors will not feel like they're the most important distributors um, if they are not regularly seeing their people. So I think those are pretty self-explanatory. Give trust. This is a tough one. I say this a lot because all these things can be hard, I think, for people. Uh, but when it comes down to it, uh, trust is, is the most important part of an industry where people live lives where they can basically go out there and, and do what they need to do and, and travel and you're not nitpicking everything they're doing. Um, so trusting them is, is ultimately the most important thing and something that's going to have them stay with you and not break your trust. Do not micromanage at all cost. Let your team um, excel in any way that works for them. If you have somebody that, that, is, uh, you know, that, that has a kid in school and they pick them up at three o'clock every afternoon so you, they lose three to four while they drop them off at the babysitter, realize it. Be okay with it. If they're successful and they find the way to be successful from nine to three or eight to three or seven to three, that's great. That's all you're looking is to make them successful. Um, unless the performance in, is lacking, there's no reason to micromanage. The only time micromanaging comes in is if somebody is not performing. And then we have to take them through a step process of seeing what it's gonna take for them to achieve their goals and give them goals in front of them, small goals, and, and see them uh, you know, attain those goals. And if they don't, then we have to think if that's the right person for, the right, for that position. If you did your job hiring, you know your team you have assembled is looking out for you and your company's bottom line. And that's, I think, the, really the, the most honest truth there could be. If somebody is, is not worthy of your trust, um, then you didn't hire correctly. Um, and, 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 and that's you know, an important part to, to remember. Um, those, are that, those that are trusted will not break your trust. I said it at the beginning. I've said it to every company I've ever worked for. Um, if, if somebody feels like you, you are put, laying it on the line for them and you're giving them the, the ability that, uh, to, to be successful, they're not going to break your trust. But if they do break your trust, it's, it's, uh, consequences are severe. In my experience, if we're giving ultimate trust and not asking questions and letting people work, if they break that trust, it, it could be an automatic suspension or an automatic uh, firing. So I think that that's the point that everybody has to understand. We're giving you trust, but if you break it, there's no going back. It's the most important, once that just like a relationship, once that trust is broken, it's very hard to mend. Give clear direction, proper training, and succinct priorities. Um, this is uh, a mouthful, but nothing brings, uh, bring, nothing brings down morale and productivity like employees being overwhelmed and not knowing what they need to do. 
For me, um, uh, everybody I've ever had on my teams, um, I've tried to keep that in mind. I've tried to be fully aware of, of, of what I'm giving these people and, and how I'm leading them because ultimately them being overwhelmed is not gonna work for them or for us. And it leads to being jaded like we talked about earlier. Um, when we all have the same common goal and priorities, we can move mountains together. Um, and that is clear direction. So if, you, if you're an importer or a distributor, you've got a 50 brand portfolio you're dealing with. If you have you know, Joe in uh, Alabama selling this brand and Susie in California selling this brand and so on and so forth, you're never, gonna, you're never gonna get in the direction your company needs to get in. We all, every single person has to have a clear direction. What's important? What am I doing right now? And what are we all pushing towards? You know, what's that long-term goal? What's that short-term goal? And what's that medium-term goal? So for us, uh, you know, in my current company, it's very important that we're moving in the same direction um, at all times because that is what allows us to move mountains. Um, with one person doing their own thing, swimming, up, swimming upstream, they're not going to do that. Take the time to invest in training. You know, I think that that's easy to say and hard to do. We get busy, we have a lot going on in our lives on a regular basis, all of us, professionally, personally. Um, but if we don't take the time to properly train, then how can we hold our team accountable when they're not successful? Um, so the more they know, one, the more invested in the company they, begin, they become. If, they, if they're allowed to take you know, uh, classes on the side, to take wine classes, you know, business classes, if they're, if they're brought into the office and, and sat through seminars you know, once a quarter, they feel like they're more part of a team and they're more part of a unit and they, and they appreciate that and they appreciate the professional growth you're, you're giving them. And a lot of this, again, has to do with appreciation. People appreciating um, that they're a part of something bigger than just a job of their own. All right, give praise and credit when it's due. Uh, this is another one that, and I will uh, summarize these at the end so you don't have to write fast. Um, I grew up uh, in a large family, so I speak very fast so I can get out what I need to say. So uh, sorry if it's too fast for you. But um, this is another one that I think everybody knows this, but not everybody does it. Um, there is almost nothing that'll hurt morale when you take like when you take credit for somebody else's success. Um, if, if somebody's successful, put it out there. Let the president know, let the owner know, let the accounts know, let the distributor know. Put it out there that, you, that this person did a great job and you're, you're proud of the work that they've done. Um, being recognized for hard work is one of the easiest ways to help morale. And again, these things can help to bury other things. They can hide, you know, not the highest wages. Um, they, can, they can hide, you know, not making your bonus that year. Being praised for your hard work is a little thing that can really, really help morale. And in turn, taking credit for things your team done, like I said, is, is the quickest way to lose people. Um, you will create a competitive environment for your team where everyone will work hard to get their name in the spotlight. If you're an email company and somebody has a big hit with, you know, uh, let's say Publix in Florida and it's 3,000 cases that just went out, you hold them up high, you put them on a pedestal, you let everybody know this person did a great job, this is a success, and all their peers, we're salespeople, we're, we should all be competitive. Um, they're looking at it saying, I want to be the next person who's on an email. So that's a, a quiet benefit of doing this is that other people will fight to put their own name in the limelight. The important part of that is you got to be consistent with it because if somebody else does something great and you don't give them the credit, they get doubly as upset. When recognized once, you'll get twice the work out of an employee. You know, if they know they're going to be appreciated, they'll put the work in. And, and for me, it's always been that case. When I don't feel appreciated, it's hard to put everything you have into that job. Then it's just personal. Then it's your own personal success and that's all you're worried about. And not worried about the company's success. So get, get, uh, you know, they will put in double the amount of work once they know you're going to say thanks for it, which is an easy thing. When possible, include families and significant others. Another one that I think um, we don't do a lot in this industry. Uh, I have personally been lucky to work for a couple different companies where this was the case, and I have talked about it with everybody I know, and I'm talking about it right now in front of you all. I think that um, that is something that can set you apart. Um, again, not paying the most competitive wages, having a small company, having a small portfolio. Um, if you can include significant others and, and, and families, uh, that's something that people will say, you know what, we're we're one unit, we're part of a unit, and I'm willing to stick through. So we ask a lot of our employees in this business, and I think that most of you hopefully realize that, and if you don't, we do. Um, it's not a nine to five job. Um, we ask for long hours, um, excessive travel, weekends. I mean, I, I personally take 175 flights a year. It's not easy. 
but we all have to be aware that people are working hard out there. Um, uh, show your appreciation to the ones who made it all possible. When you create a family atmosphere with your team and your families, you'll be able to weather any storm as a family. And again, I've personally seen this. You know, when you're all together, if you bring everybody together, um, you will be willing and, and they will be willing and able to put up with anything that happens. Um, I've seen presidents leave companies. I've seen, uh, you know, major brands leave. But when people feel like they're part of a unit, they stick around um, and they work hard to, to fight through that storm. Um, and, this, and this will become something, like I said, your team brags about, making you a very desirable company overnight. That's an ancillary benefit, is that people will talk about it. You know, we are a company that really cares about our employees. We're a company that really brings everybody together. For me, that is something that is extremely important, and when I look for a company to work for, it's the most important part of it, is that I know that this is a company that actually cares about who I am as an employee and who I am as, as, a, uh, as a piece of that unit. Focus on growth plans. This is the last point. For your best employees, you've got to have growth plans. You know, they're not going to stick around if you're, if you're continually talking about what they're doing right now and if it's successful, not giving them what you want to do in the future. I personally do annual reviews for everybody on my team, which is a team of 18 people across the country. Um, every single one of them um, has a growth plan with me, and we talk about it every single year, how they're moving towards that growth plan. If uh, they do not have a growth plan, that's a problem. If you don't see that growth coming, then that means that that employee might not be the best employee for your company. Um, for some people, a growth plan might just be expanding people under them. They might be somebody that doesn't want to cover a 20 state territory. They want to cover New Jersey alone. Keep them, that, let them live in that New Jersey world, but your growth plan for them is as they get their business to a certain level, you add somebody under them and then you add somebody else under them, and you give them that as their growth plan, that they will have more support in the street to help them. Um, rate your team confidentially. Uh, this is an old boss of mine many years ago told me this, and I do it always. Um, regularly see who keeps coming to the top. I look at my list of, of, of uh, you know, team members, and I, and I just put a one, two, three, you know, all the way down, no matter how many I have. And if one person is always in that one to three, that's somebody that we need to accelerate the growth plan for. That's somebody that's, that has a lot of success in front of them. Um, if somebody is continually at eight, nine, ten, depending on the size of your company, that's somebody that we have to keep an eye out for. They might need more training, they might need more support, um, they might need hearing from you or, or people below you, uh, you know, more. Um, have a clear and concise growth plan like I talked about for your best employees especially. Um, let them know what that plan is so they can look forward to the future with the company. That's always a challenging part because when we, looked at, when we look to it, we like people in the positions they're in. This happened to me at the beginning of my career. Uh, you know, it was 25 uh, years ago, I was a busboy in a restaurant uh, and I was a good busboy. I'll be honest, I was a good busboy. I worked really hard at it, I cleaned tables fast and I moved fast. So they cut a busboy, it was just me on Friday nights. So I was proud. I was a young kid, I was 15 years old, um, and I was excited about, about, about being, you know, making money as a busboy. But after a couple years of doing that, I wanted more. I, I saw what servers were making, I saw what bartenders were making, and once I approached my company, um, they said, you know, it's hard, Matt, because everybody likes having you as a busboy. So it's really difficult for us to, to move you to a server, because then who are we going to replace you with? So I personally left that company, you know? So I think, all, and that was when I was very young. I think it's important that we realize that. The, the, the best people, you know, if you can find a way to give them their strengths and be successful with their strengths, um, they're gonna pay out long-term for you. So don't let people stick in a position because they're good there. Um, it's, it is a difficult task. Um, if you do not share this, uh, someone else will hear of their talent and will offer them a growth plan. Um, if they do not know you feel the same, they may leave, and that's for sure. You know, wh what's happening with somebody who's covering a three-state territory for you who's a fantastic uh, earner, a fantastic uh, pro professional person, they're having other companies come up to them regularly and saying, listen, I know you're a great area manager. How'd you like to be a regional manager? How'd you like to be a divisional manager? So we know that those things are happening. Let's be aware of it and be, and be uh, comfortable with the fact that we need to offer those same things to our company. Don't let our companies become stepping stones. You know, if we give growth plans, we don't allow that. We put those little stones in front of our people so they're comfortable and happy. All right, in summary, I got 15 seconds left. Recruiting, retaining. 
So as you can see, retaining is the most important, of course. That's something that we all have to be uh, successful with. But recruiting is equally important. Getting those right people is the people that we put the growth plans in for and we work hard uh, uh, to get where they want to go. So I'm, unfortunately, I'm not going to have time for question and answer because that is exactly my timing of 30 minutes. I apologize. But I will be around. Um, feel free to grab me. Um, the last slide here has my email address. This was question and answer time. We were going to huddle up. I was going to have you all stand up. It was a really cool thing I had put together. But unfortunately, we can't do it. Uh, but there's my email address. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, feel free to grab me here today. Um, I know that you know, all of us are in the same boat, small to medium-sized companies working to, to go up against the biggest companies out there. And uh, let's all have success doing so. I appreciate your time. Thank you.